Hello my dear students, I am Roshni. Today we will learn the 8th chapter from our Hornbill book and the chapter's name is Silk Road. In this chapter, which is written by Nick Middleton, the readers will be blessed to experience the splendor of nature. Students, before we move into the story, we need to understand that what is Silk Road or Silk Route? Okay, so let me tell you this is Silk Road. Okay, this red line which is shown out here is Silk Road and this is the prime connection between Eastern and the Western world. As you can see, Silk Road, it starts from China and it goes towards western part of the world okay in between it touches india persia arabia and Afri some po portion of africa as well all right and uh, there are many more countries which are connected with this silk road so because of this vast connection we get to see exchange of trade political cultural and religious exchanges Students, the title Silk Road has been extracted from a book of Nick Middleton which was published on 8th May 2006. The name of the book is Extremes Along the Silk Road, Adventures of the World's Oldest Highway. Okay, And uh, the Silk Road is a German term which has been received from Siden Straffe. It means a long trail that led from Europe to China. It has two meanings. If we see its literal or word to word meaning, we find it's a trail that led from Europe to China, which was used for trading of silk. Okay, the commodity which was used excessively was silk. It's not that only silk was transported, all right, but along with silk, spices, cloths, Okay, animals were also traded from this route. But when we see metaphorically based on this story, we find the act of Korah. Okay, what is Korah? We will read in the story, right? An act that is Korah is as valuable and distinguishable as silk. Silk is very expensive commodity, all right? And the Korah which Nick Middleton performed after reaching Mount Kailash, okay, it was valuable act, all right, it was unique compared to any other activities that was performed out there in that area of Himalayan belt, okay. Here we find theme of the chapter. There are three broader themes which we see in the Silk Road and first theme is value of relationship. Here, being a social animal, we won't be able to live without relationship. So, it's not that the relation should come from our family. But with love, with warmth, we can make others also as our family members when we go to unknown places. So, here even the narrator was able to make relationship, okay, friendship rather, with so many people which he enjoyed a lot. Right? And it's talks about companionship as well it was a long journey and without companion it was impossible to reach to the destination and in between there were lots and lots of obstacles which narrator and his companion had to experience so without willpower it was not possible to accomplish the task for which they were out all right so power of determination is another theme of the story let's understand few more details about the writer the writer's date of birth is not mentioned all right it is only year which is reflected everywhere so here we have 1960 as his birth year he was born in london england he is a british physical geographer okay please understand this in order to understand the story and supernumerary fellow of saint agnes college oxford supernumerary it means person who works in a group okay they set a target okay they set a plan and then they work in a group so one of the member was nick middleton in saint annie's college oxford 
he specializes in desertification out here when he worked with other fellows this was his particular topic as a geographer he has traveled to more than 50 countries you can imagine there was there are people who don't move out of the home okay but he is the one who has visited 50 countries yet going to the extremes is a television program for channel 4 about extreme lifestyles in which Middleton experiences life in the hostile conditions other cultures must endure. So, there are places where people are living in extreme temperature and extreme conditions. Silk Road is a detailed account of the author's visit to Mount Kailash. Please remember this. Where is it and what is the significance of this mountain? We will read in the line-wise explanation. He visited the place to do the Kora. Kora means Parikrama, around the holy mountain. Parikrama, just like Hindus do the Parikrama of the Mandir, okay, temples or any holy tree or animal. In the same way, he has come to do Kora of this mountain, Mount Kailash, with other pilgrims. Along with the narrator, there were other pilgrims also who had come out here to perform the same task. The Kora was seasonal and he was perhaps the first pilgrim in season to reach Hor town from where he was to start his pilgrimage. So, after reaching that place, it was Hor town from where he had to start the journey of his pilgrimage. But he had become the earliest person. He was the first person to start his pilgrimage. He had to encounter several obstacles on the way to reach Hor. What were those obstacles we are going to discuss in this story? The writer uses picaresque phrases. Picaresque means the words with which we can imagine something. Okay, here Nick Middleton is narrating his journey. So, the beautiful scenic beauty he describes through, through different words and phrases. Okay, so through those words we are able to imagine we are able to use our imaginary skills in order to understand and experience the Middleton's point of view. So, it is called picaresque phrases to describe the scenic beauty of the mountains. The whole description is quite interesting as it reveals many unknown facts about a journey up the most difficult terrain in the world. Here, there are different places in the world for pilgrimage. Some goes to Mecca, some goes to different places. If we talk about Hindus, there are different temples okay, where they go to visit, pay their visit to the deity. All right? So here the same thing is happening and most of the Tibetans were there to perform the same. But this is very difficult journey compared to other pilgrimages of the world. Hello my dear students, let's start with the story line wise now. A flawless perfect half moon floated in a perfect blue sky on the morning we said our goodbyes. Now from here he is going to start, the narrator Nick Middleton is going to start his journey. And here at the first line he is talking about the scene of the sky. The sky was so clear, it was flawless, it was perfect because of which they were able to see half moon as well. Half moon was floated perfectly in the sky. So when we can see moon in the sky, when the sky is clear. On the morning we said goodbyes. That was the day when, when Nick was leaving the place and he was moving towards his journey. Extended banks of cloud like long French loaves glowed pink as the sun emerged to splash the distant mountain tops with a rose tinted blush so here you need to understand banks of the cloud it means banks means usually edges or the side portion of something okay let me draw out here the cloud now here these portions are called banks okay just like a river bank okay these sides are called banks of the river so in the same way the banks of the cloud means these areas okay it these were extended in order to make it just like a long loaf okay these portions had extended to make it just like this okay and it had become the shape of a 
bread okay uncut bread not the sliced one okay usually we eat sliced breads but cut one is called a loaf okay so because of the sunlight which was coming from behind it glowed and the color had become rose tinted rose colored it means color of rose is red so it had become red colored cloud and the mountain as well okay and it was dawn period dawn means before the sunrise the time before morning it is called dawn time so at this time the narrator left the place to start his further journey what was that let's find out now that we were leaving ravu lamu said she wanted to give me a farewell present so here the next journey started after leaving ravu till now the narrator was at this place and this is the place which is nearby mount kailash it is convenient for the travelers to stay here in order to continue further journey it is a kind of resting place okay so here maybe it was lamu the lady who took care of the narrator by providing food and shelter so when they were leaving she wanted to give a farewell gift to the narrator and she what she gave let's find out one evening i had told her through daniel that i was heading towards mount kailash to complete the kora and she said that i ought to get some warmer clothes now through daniel there is another character in the narration and his name is daniel till now we are acquainted with the writer lamu and now daniel okay so while interacting with daniel he had said that he is going to perform the act of kora now what is act of kora let me tell you kora is a tibetan word which means circumambulation or revolution okay in hindi it is called parikrama usually when hindus go to the temple what do they do they take rounds around the idol or the temple so this is same we find in tibetan culture as well so here kora means the same after ducking back into her tent she emerged carrying one of the long sleeved ship skin coats that all men wore here lady that is lamu who wanted to present something to the narrator she came with full sleeved or long sleeved ship skin coat for the narrator she wanted to give it to men because she wanted to give it to the narrator because he had decided to go to mount kailash for kora all right and this ship skin coat was popular out there because this prevented cold in that extreme weather so being friendly lamu provided this coat as a gift to this narrator that is nick okay she then sized me up as we clambered she then sizing up means to look carefully okay and they clambered very difficulty with difficulty he went inside the car and then shitin told him that drogba or shepherd the narrator after wearing that ship coat was looking like a shepherd of that particular place we took a shortcut to get off the chantang shitin knew a route that would take us southwest almost directly towards mount kailash here chantang is a plateau plateau of that place okay now what is plateau you must have read in geography book there are three forms of landforms that is mountain plateaus and plains okay mountain is already clear to everyone now what is plateau let me tell you plateau is flat top land and chantang was that in that area now she then in order to save time and shorten the journey he had taken shortcut and he knew if he will go from southwest they are directly going to reach to mount kailash and then the narrator can perform his kora okay it involved crossing several ferry high mountain passes he said but no problem sir he assured us if there is no snow what was the likelihood of that i asked not knowing sir until we get there now in order to reach mount kailash if they will take the shortcut 
they have to cross mountain passes and mountain passes are not going to very be very easy to cross because there will be steep slopes there will be boulders okay there will be obstacles of different sorts which they have to cross and if there will be snow it is going to hike their problem again so when narrator asked whether there will be snowfall out there or not he said that there is no prediction that can be made now unless and until they reach there so what happens further let's see from the gently rolling hills of ravu the shortcut took us across vast open plains with nothing in them except a few gazelles now here when they started moving towards this shortcut okay they found gentle rolling hills gentle rolling hills means the hills which are not so steep okay this type of place is called spur okay on a spur you can walk as well but you cannot walk in this kind of mountain place okay or hill this is called steep hills okay so they found spur type of land and then it led to a vast open land okay after reaching to this place they could see it was a vast land where they could see gazelles gazelles are african and asian mammals with beautiful big eyes okay it's also called a kind of deer okay that would look up from nibbling the arid pastures and a frown before bounding away into the void in this pastured land they were eating dry grass and they were jumping here and there and they went to some empty place okay as i told you that it led to a plain space so these deer these animals went to some void place or empty place vacant place further on where the plains became more stony than grassy a great herd of wild ash came into view sitan told us we were approaching them long before they appeared kyang he said pointing towards a far off pall of dust now here we need to understand that in that plain area where they found gazelles were crossed and now they were heading towards a stony place okay now there were no more grassy lands but stony path appeared on which they had to walk and there they found a herd of wild ash okay they came in a group and while walking they had spread dust as well so in that pall of dust in that curtain of dust okay they were not visible to the narrator and then shitan said it is kyang okay kyang it means a group of wild ash all right when we drew near i could see the herd of galloping and mass wheeling and turning in tight formation as if they were practicing maneuvers on some predetermined course now here after reaching to that stony place they saw wild ash they were galloping okay galloping means running fast and they were in group there were no single wild ash only a group they will always walk in a group so they were wheeling turning and making different forms as if they were making or practicing maneuver maneuver means planned movement okay strategies or strategic movements as if they had to perform somewhere okay they were repeating some movement okay same movement which was unusual plumes of dust billowed into the crisp clean air now here plumes means clouds of dust okay clouds of dust or a wheel of dust which is made by the galloping of the animals okay so here when they walked away when those wild ashes walked away they made a cloud type of formation with the dust okay in which they want 
they were not able to see what is there in front of them all right so clean air had become dusty because of the galloping of the animals as hills started to push up once more from the rocky wilderness we passed solitary drogbas tending their flocks now here after those stony path or trails they reached to hills again or mountain area again all right now here they found solitary drogbas solitary drogbas means shepherds solitary means alone okay there were single drogbas who were tending their flocks flocks of sheep sometimes men sometimes women these well wrapped figures well wrapped figures means they wore clothes okay their entire body was covered with clothes figures would pass and stare at our car occasionally waving as we passed now these drogbas waved for the people who came in car okay it was just a friendly gesture from their end when the track took us close to their animals the ship would take evasive action veering away from the speeding vehicle now these drogbas were with ships okay their ships so when car approached towards the road okay and ships were pasturing here so in order to move ahead they had to go through this way and when they moved ahead these ships deflected their directions okay that is what we call evasive action okay in order to save themselves they moved from their main course okay we passed nomads dark tents pitched in splendid isolation usually with a huge black dog a tibetan mastiff standing guard now here when they reached to another place they found nomads tents were constructed out there okay now who are nomads nomads are people who shift from one place to another in search of food and shelter here these people move in caravans or some vehicles okay now if they will not find that place suitable they will move to another place and they will set up their tent and then again they will carry on in this way okay so these people the people who move from one place to another they are called nomads now here the narrator that is nick middleton and shitin they could see tents of nomads and these tents were in isolation okay in the far off areas there were only few tents and splendid means far away from that place they, they could not see any other tent so these tents were in isolation and in order to guard their tents they had domesticated the these tibetan mastiff breed of dog these beasts would cock or lift their great big heads when they became aware of our approach and fix us in their sights now these beasts why he is calling these dogs as beasts because of their look because of their ferocious look and action as well okay their great big heads they when they became aware of our approach when the car of the narrator along with shitain approached there they became alert tibetan mastiff dogs became alert as we continued to draw closer they would explode into action speeding directly towards us like a bullet from a gun and nearly as fast now tibetan mastiff they were kept for guarding the nomadic tents okay so when they saw some unusual activity or approach of some unknown person then they used to attack them just like a bullet okay straight away they had gone to attack the car of the narrator all right so this action okay the attacking of tibetan mastiff is compared with a bullet it is to show their fierce action and their concentration as well these shaggy monsters blacker than the darkest night usually wore bright red collar collars and 
barked furiously with massive jaws. They were completely fearless of our vehicle, shooting straight into our path, causing Sitan to break and swiver. Here, saggy monsters are Tibetan mastiffs, and they are monsters because their appearance is furious. They have jaws, okay, massive jaws, and they are as black as the darkest night. Okay, so overall, their appearance is so fearsome. Therefore, they are compared with the monster. Blacker than the darkest night. Darkest night means the night which does not have moon. When we are not able to see anything, that is called darkest night without any light. So, their color of the fur is compared with the darkest night. Usually wore bright colors. At the color, they find fur, okay, which is of different color, bright red color. And barked furiously with massive jaws. They used to bark at unknown or unusual face. Okay. And they used to show their massive jaws to scare the unknown person. They were completely fearless of our vehicle. The vehicle which was heading towards Tibetan Mastiff. Okay. Dogs. Okay. Tibetan Mastiff. Dogs did not move to some other direction. Just like ships. Okay, we have already discussed that what ship did in when the car of the narrator okay, approached in the pastured lands. They deflected their way. Okay, the ships went to different directions but not these Tibetan Mastiff dogs. Okay, it shows that compared to ships, they were very dangerous and they were not deflected to any other direction because of this speedy car. Okay. And Shitin had to use brake in order to change the direction. Swerve means to change the direction or deviate from the direction which they had taken in order to shape themselves from these Tibetan Mastiff dogs. I hope it's clear, children. The dog would make chase for a hundred meters or so before easing off, having seen us off the property. Now here, we are talking about Tibetan Mastiff who were regarded as monsters, who were compared with monsters, okay? And they used to chase outsider up to 100 meters. When they saw them away from their property, they used to relax, they used to go back. But 100 meters, imagine, it's a long distance, okay? So, they did not take any chance in order to save their properties, that is tent, okay? From their area, they used to send outsider away anyhow. It wasn't difficult to understand why ferocious Tibetan Mastiffs became popular in China's imperial courts as hunting dogs brought along the Silk Road in ancient times as tribute from Tibet. Here, Tibetan Mastiffs were brought from Tibet because they were best guards. Okay, and why we have already known just now because they never allowed any outsider in that area. So, even the royal people. Even the people who were related to empire or royal empire, like king, queen, etc., they used Tibetan mastiffs, they domesticated Tibetan mastiffs in order to save their kingdom. So here we talk about the quality of Tibetan mastiff breed of dogs. By now we could see snow-capped mountains gathering on the horizon. We entered a valley where the rivers was white and mostly clogged with ice, brilliant white and glinting in the sunshine. The trail hugged its bank, twisting with the meanders as we gradually gained weight and the valley sides closed in. Here, now the area of nomads has been left and they are moving towards the mountainous region now. Okay, and at the horizon, they could see mountain, mountains which were snow-capped. Now, horizon is a place where we see earth and sky meeting. Okay, here from where it does not meet actually, but when we see from the distance, we find that earth and sky 
meeting at one place okay so this place is called horizon from horizon they could see these snow capped mountains not only that they saw river which was blocked with ice these are called icebergs okay icebergs block of ice in the water because of this iceberg the river was blocked so we can understand that the temperature was very low because water turns into ice in extreme weather extreme temperature only the ice was very brilliant and it was glinting okay the flash of light was there because of the sunshine the trail hugged its bank twisting with the meanders now the route was like this meander means snake like way okay curves as we gradually gained heights and the valley sides closed in started moving upward and the river also became meandering in the course okay meandering means to see this kind of to make this kind of shape okay he turns the turns became sharper and they ride bumpier she then now in third gear as we continued to climb now here the road had become difficult now because they had reached the mountain top gradually okay now they are riding in third gear because the speed had become very low because of bumpier road full of jerks and bumps okay the track moved away from the icy river laboring through steeper slopes that spotted big rocks dobbed with patches of bright orange lichen beneath the rocks hunks of snow hung on in the near permanent shade here the task had become very difficult the riding had become very big difficult because even though they are away from those meandering rivers but the rocks okay the huge rocks had become very dangerous because there was a thick substance which which had grown on the rocks which had made it bit slippery okay and these white lichens okay what are lichens a slow growing plant which grows on walls trees on rocks and because of this lichen okay there was a danger of getting vehicle slipped beneath the rocks hunks of snow clung hold tightly into something now here snow had clung the road and the rocks which had made the riding difficult i felt the pressure building up in my ears held my nose snorted and cleared them now as they moved towards the mountain because of the pressure the ears of the narrator was getting blocked and nose because of the cold weather and here he cleared it by snorting we struggled around we struggled round another tight bend and she then stopped he had opened his door and jumped out of the seat before i realized what was going on snow said daniel as he too did the vehicle letting in a breath of cold air as he did so now here when daniel went out to see what has happened through the door of the car he could experience cold air a swath of the white stuff lay across the track in front of us stretching for maybe 15 meters before it petered out now here white stuff is snow okay and it had stretched to 15 meters all right because of this the trouble was caused and after 15 meters again there was dirt trail which could be seen by the narrator the snow continued on either side of us smoothing the abrupt bank on the unsloped side the bank was too steep for our vehicle to scale so there was no way around the snow patch now here upslope side means suppose this is mountain okay here there is trail for the vehicle to go and the steep slope again continues now here there was deposition of ice 
okay because of which their car could not get over it in order to cross the road all right so they were stuck here and they could not do anything the bank the bank of the ice had become too steep so that they could not cross it at all i joined daniel as sitan stepped on to the encrusted snow now here the narrator who was inside the car till now he also joined daniel as sitan stepped on to the encrusted snow encrusted means the hard surface or the layer okay when snow falls okay layer wise it gets deposited and when it gets pressure it becomes hard okay it becomes compact all right so from here the vehicle of the narrator had to move so he was checking how sturdy this ice is snow and began to slither to move smoothly over a surface and slide forward stamping his foot from time to time to ascertain how sturdy it was i looked at my wrist watch we were at 5210 meters above sea level now here he was checking whether the surface of the road is adequate to move ahead or it is going to be slippery okay so when he was checking that the narrator happened to see the height of the place and it was 5210 meters above the sea level the snow did not look too deep to me but the danger wasn't its depth daniel said so much as its icy top layer if we slip off the car could not turn over he suggested as we saw sitan grab handful of dirt and fling them across the frozen surface now here the depth was not a big deal for the rider the driver but the slippery surface was therefore in order to cause friction what shitan was doing shitan was putting dirt or the mud whatever was available there he was flinging the same onto the frozen surface we both pitched in and then the snow was spread with soil daniel and i stayed out of the vehicle to lighten sitan's road now daniel and the narrator they came off the car so that the light weight of the car would let sitan cross that particular road which was troublesome till now he backed up and drove towards the dirty snow eased the car onto its icy surface and slowly drove its length without apparent difficulty now after spreading soil onto the ice the driving had become very easy they could cross that blockage easily 10 minutes later we stopped at another blockage now after crossing this first obstacle they were hindered they were stopped by another blockage again not good sir shitan announced as he jumped out again to survey or to check the scene this time he decided to try and drove sorry drive around the snow now this time it was not possible now he said that i will drive across the snow in order to get to another place because every time they cannot throw snow because the type of a snow changes at different places the slope was steep and it started with major rocks but somehow sitan negotiated them now this time he did not want to use dirt but he wanted to try to drive on those boulders or rocks his four wheel drive vehicle lurching or listing or lingering from one obstacle to the next in so doing he cut off one of the hairpin bends regaining the trail further up where the snow had not drifted now here after crossing this obstacle they had come to another place now this obstacle was very dangerous because the car was literally hanging on the rock okay it shows that the boulder the rock was very big and somehow 
she then was able to cross that rocky terrain rocky road i checked my watch again as we continued to climb in the bright sunshine now after that obstacle there was somehow smoother road and they started climbing ahead we kept we crept past 5400 meters and my head began to throb horribly now here his head was throbbing that means it was vibrating it was having headache i took gulps from my water bottle he drank water which is supposed to help a rapid accent rapid accent means they were moving upward towards the mountain okay so in this journey he had become sick he was having headache because he was having headache because of height okay because of low pressure and he had heard that gulping of water is going to ease the problem for that he was doing the same we finally reached the top of the pass at 5515 meters it was marked by a large crane of rocks now here finally they reached to the top and the height was 5515 meters and there was a pass pass means to make a way out of mountain okay so after cutting the mountain they had made a way and it was made it was marked by a large crane rocks that means large rocks were kept at both the sides in order to indicate that the pass is there from that place fastened with white silk scarves and ragged prayer flags with silk scarves and flags okay prayer flags it indicated that pass is from that particular area we all took a turn around the crane in a clockwise direction clockwise means as the clock moves okay this direction is called clockwise and this movement is called anti clockwise okay as is the tradition and shiten checked the tires on his vehicle he stopped at the petrol tank and partially unscrewed the top which emitted a loud hiss now they reached to the height and they had to fill their petrol tank as well because till now they had covered lots of journey and they had to keep their resources ready therefore he filled the tank at the petrol pump but when he opened the tank of the petrol there was a hiss sound it showed that because of the low pressure the lower atmospheric pressure was allowing the fuel to fill to expand now because of the low pressure low atmospheric pressure the fuel had expanded it sounded dangerous to me maybe sir she then laughed but no smoking here the narrator said that it is dangerous but she then said that don't worry the fuel tank is not smoking he said it jokingly my headache soon cleared as we as we carried down the other side of the pass it was 2 o'clock by the time we stopped for lunch we ate hot noodles inside a long canvas tent part of a work camp erected beside a dry salt lake now here they ate their meal out here hot noodles like a long canvas tent inside a long canvas tent in a tent he ate noodles because they were very hungry part of a work camp erected beside a dry salt lake now here now here we get to see that the health of the narrator was getting better because they were descending downwards now okay so while descending downwards they saw a tent okay a long canvas tent where they had their hot noodles and it was a work camp okay it was a kind a big camp okay and this camp was erected at dry salt lake 
okay it was a lake which had already dried and it was a salt lake okay this was dry salt lake on which this tent was made okay and here they had their hot noodles the plateau is pockmarked with salt flats and blackish lakes vestiges of the tethys ocean which bordered tibet before the great continental collision that lifted it skyward now here it is a plateau which is pockmarked with salt flats okay pockmark means to pockmark means this kind of marks okay dotted marks and it is blackish lake why it is blackish because these are vestiges vestiges means remnants of something so these are remnants of tethys ocean now what is tethys ocean let me show you here you can see gondwana area and laurasia as well okay because of the continental shelf movement because of the movement of plates gondwana area started moving towards laurasia and because of the collision because of the collision means because of the strike the mountain range mountain range was formed so still there are vestiges of these salt flats or salt lakes okay which bordered tibet before the great continental collision these remnants of the ocean used to border tibet before the great continental collision and lifted it skyward so i hope this tethys ocean is clear to everyone now here these salt lakes were the remnants of the salt lakes were still there and the people were working out there this one was hive of activity they were full of activity okay where here in salt lakes men with pick axes okay this is equipment which is used for which is which is used by laborers and shovels trudging back and forth in their long ship skin coats and salt and crusted boots now they wore boots okay which were for that particular area and with equipments which were needed for laboring they were working on these sea lakes and they were wearing ship coats in order to prevent themselves from extreme weather students we will complete this chapter in our next video so till then prepare and uh, let me know if you have any queries thank you